Thank you all for joining today's session, The Power of Distributed Leadership, How to Identify, Support, and Activate Global Leaders for Good. Please note closed captioning is available um, right at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and let us know if you need any help with that. My name is Kaisen Batuang, uh, pronouns Z, he, and I am a genderqueer, Asian American with black hair in front of a very red background with a very bold shirt to go along with our We Give Summit theme. Um, and welcome. I am the Director of Development at Philanthropy Together. We are a global initiative to support and strengthen the growing field of collective giving. So we're so excited to also expand our audience and always include our, our global participants and global leaders in conversation. So um, in particular, we have some amazing speakers joining us to talk about uh, collective giving from the Brazilian context. So we hope you're excited. We hope you show that excitement in the chat. We hope that you engage throughout this session. Um, and once again, please fill out our quick two question poll at the end of the session to share your feedback. But um, I also wanna mention, we also would like to keep things fun here at the We Give Summit. So we'll be doing a random drawing at the end of the session. Uh, one attendee here right now will be chosen um, as a special winner to receive a book of their choice um, from one of this year's amazing speakers. So please stay till the very end and we'll announce it then. Um, but with that, I'm happy to introduce Kate Sheridan, JP Berguero, and Natalia Gonzalez. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, this is Kate from the Giving Tuesday team. Hi there, everyone. JP from Brazil, from Giving Tuesday as well. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Natalia. I'm glad to be here today with you guys. So I'll start things off um, and we're, the three of us are very excited to be here today to talk to you about movements, what make movements move and distributed leadership and to share a little bit more about our experience with the projects that we've seen and worked on um, through Giving Tuesday and through our different networks of leaders. Um, to start, I'm going to share my screen and, and walk you through some examples and stories, um, but I encourage you to please put any comments, questions, ideas um, in the chat. Uh, we'll all be monitoring and want to hear from you, so please, please send us your, your thoughts and questions along the way. Um, so I'm just going to jump on my screen here, so I believe you can now see my screen. Um, and again, my name is Kate Sheridan. I'm the Senior Director of Global for Giving Tuesday. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. I'm calling in from where I live in Hong Kong. Um, so it's a little dark behind me because it's nighttime, but um, I have a lot of energy because I've been looking forward to this um, and to really talk through what we've been learning and seeing and, and, and thinking about at Giving Tuesday, especially when it comes to distributed leadership. Um, and so Giving Tuesday, you know, over the last 10 plus years, it's really grown from a program that, that was an experiment to a global movement that really unites people all around the world around generosity and the common purpose and idea to go do good. Um, but if we kind of rewind to 2012, when Giving Tuesday started, you know, the world was different place then. Um, Gangnam Style was the most popular video on YouTube. Many of us maybe remember the dance still. Um, the social networks and, and ways people were talking to each other and sharing information um, was very different. A lot of these platforms, they, they don't even exist anymore. And if we look at where we are today, I mean, it, it just is a completely different landscape. Um, with even more opportunity for co-creation and connection and idea sharing. And um, it's really, again, if we think about a 10-year time span and all that change has presented great opportunities to inspire and encourage and, and to activate people all around the world around shared causes and around common purposes. And so Again, if we think back to 2012 and the start of Giving Tuesday, um, how a movement then grew to, to be shared and co-owned by so many, it, it did start with one. And I think this is something that we've learned from. Um, 
early on, Giving Tuesday has always been a simple idea. Um, it's to promote and unlock radical generosity. And it was led initially by, you know, one small part-time team. Everyone had other projects to do working out of one nonprofit community center, the 92nd Street Y in New York. Um, and initially it focused on one country. You know, it was, we have in America, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, days about consumption. You know, what if we could harness that energy to get people to, to go do good? Um, and that was the idea. And it was launched like 60 days before the first Giving Tuesday. And the team worked on some key outreach strategies that have kind of helped shape the movement into what it is today. We found some founding partners. So we got some people to commit early on to participating and to, to sharing what they were doing. Again, they were creating their own, putting their own spin on what they would do for Giving Tuesday. Um, there was also a lot of cold emailing calls and outreach. There were lists and flip charts um, on the wall of different networks and people to connect to, again, especially targeting those network partners, associations, membership groups, um, people who we knew if we connected to those people, they could then connect to many more people. Um, we also launched social media ambassadors and a team of influencers, which Again, 2012 world, influencers meant, did not have the meeting that it had today. Um, the social media ambassadors, these are everyday people who liked the idea of Giving Tuesday and signed up to join a email list where they would be fed different content and information to share. So um, for those of you who remember, we would send things like sign up for our thunderclap <laughs> and then people would sign up and we'd all make an announcement at the same time on Twitter. And so from the very, very start, um, it wasn't about the team planning an event or controlling it or organizing everything on their own. It was always about providing the tools and ideas and supporting others in pursuing their own interests and, and, and um, campaigns around Giving Tuesday. And the strategy really worked that first year, that experimental year, it did reach every 50 US state, lots of different organizations participated and immediately other people started approaching the Giving Tuesday team, um, asking, hey, can, can we take this concept and adapt it for our communities? So we started seeing city or geographic campaigns like Be More Gives More in Baltimore, which is one of the first big city campaigns. Um, cause coalitions like Giving Zoo Day, which was the association of zoos across the U.S., and also first country movements like Judy Dewar in Brazil, which we'll hear about, um, Giving Tuesday Canada, and, and a few others who really raised their hands and said, we'd like to take this, put our own brand, our own logo, our different name on it, and really help grow the mo movement for the communities where we live. And so very organically, it started to grow and scale as an unbranded, so again, it looks, feels different everywhere, but yet coordinated movement because everyone is working towards the same destination and that same purpose of promoting generosity and encouraging others to do good. And it's through this kind of proximate leadership, through this empowerment, that Giving Tuesday really became global. More and more communities joined the movement more and more leaders within countries raised their hands, um, looking to take it and to adapt the movement, bring it to their country. And so as a global team, the strategy um, really has been and continues to be to focus on these leaders and to provide them with tools, peer network, resources, and the support they need to help them grow their movement according to a strategy that they make that makes sense for their contexts. Um, they really are the champions and it's with them that the movement's been able to grow. And we call them our hand raisers. So they're literally raising their hand, volunteering, most are doing this voluntarily and in their spare time um, to bring Giving Tuesday to their communities. And again, it's through them, they are taking the idea, they're using templates and tools, but creating their own, translating, adding different pieces to it um, to make Giving Tuesday relevant and to make it actionable for the communities where they live. And that's how now today we have over 90 official country movements. 
So uh, from Giving Tuesday India to Giving Tuesday Italy to Giving Tuesday Uganda, our most recent addition to the global community, every single movement looks and feels different, has different names, has different logos, um, and has different strategies because they're led by these leaders who are making it useful and relevant specifically to where they are. So where do these hand raisers come from? How do we find them? This is a big question and we've done a lot of thinking about this. And the answer that we keep coming back to is there kind of isn't a specific profile or type. These people, they really are existing, living, working in all different parts of society. They're not necessarily at NGOs. They're not necessarily fundraisers. They come from all different backgrounds, careers, experiences. Um, but what, what binds them, what, what they all have in common is this shared passion and, and idea for the potential of Giving Tuesday as a generosity movement. And so I'll just share some quick stories and examples just to give you an idea of some of the country leader um, who we work with. So Yael is the leader for Giving Tuesday France. She also heads the Association of French Fundraisers, so works a lot with NGOs and with fundraising organizations. Um, JP in Chile, he actually started Giving Tuesday while he was still at university. And he continued to leave it in his spare time outside of his full-time job in the agency. Marley in Zimbabwe, we actually met Marley through our Starling Collective, which is our fellowship program for grassroots leaders. Marley saw how Giving Tuesday can do even more for her community and raised their hand to take the movement to Zimbabwe. We also work with Pablo, who leads AFS in the Dominican Republic. So he works very closely with volunteers, volunteer networks, um, but is also using Giving Tuesday to reach communities and organizations outside of the volunteer sector and to get them involved. Um, same goes for Cheryl. Cheryl works at Simply Giving and Cheryl comes from a crowdfunding. They're a big platform in the region. Um, but Cheryl is using her platform, but also adding other tools and opportunities and networks to promote Giving Tuesday and to spread it throughout Malaysia. And Anita, Anita has been uh, one of our leaders since the very start. Um, and she's an entrepreneur. She's always been able to find great resources in volunteers and partners to help grow the movement. Um, but to kind of show how this proximate and this distributed leadership model works, if we focus on Anita, right, one person who's leading Giving Tuesday for a country, for Mexico. Anita, in her strategy and her outreach, was able to connect with Junith, who works at HipGive. And HipGive has a huge network and is a great platform and resource all across Latin America. And Junith and her team were excited by Giving Tuesday and talked to Anita and put together a community and coalition campaign, Latinx Give. And they promoted this through their network, leveraging HipGive's resources, reach, platform to promote opportunities for giving around Giving Tuesday. Now, other people heard about this through either HipGive's marketing, through Anita's outreach. They were able to bring Giving Tuesday to their places of work. Foundations, companies, businesses started getting involved. Local communities heard about it and started coming together, hosting bake sales, getting people together in person to celebrate generosity, and it trickled all the way down to the individual volunteer. But if we think about where this started, it started with Anita doing outreach with one person with a lot of passion and a great idea, and she was able to find champions, these leaders who just continued to put their own twist on the idea but really helped spread it. And that's really how the movements continued to grow. Because, you know, ultimately, what's at the heart of every movement, it, it's people. People are moving the movements. Movements will move. And so being able to find the right people is so key when you're trying to build this kind of model. And so it doesn't come without work. <laughs> um, our, our people, our leaders, they're talking and working every day throughout the year, sharing ideas, um, working on their strategy, 
coming up with plans, doing outreach to grow Giving Tuesday in their countries. We have a WhatsApp group that's active literally daily um, where they're sharing tips and tools and templates and supporting one another in their work. Um, but again, like these individuals, they're coming together, even though they might not speak the same language, they have very different backgrounds, they live in completely different places, but again, they're all united by the values of the movement and by their belief in the power of generosity and giving to disability to, to promote that. And these, these people who are working together and supporting each other as a group, they're then taking these tools, taking these strategies and, and spreading them out. So they're helping connect people and encouraging collaboration um, through causes and coalitions like Latinx Give, which we talked about. They're bringing towns, cities, and communities together in new ways. Um, this happened and continued to grow during the pandemic and is continuing now, especially as we're, we're beyond any restrictions. Um, and we're also seeing more and more activations and leaderships from youth um, who are stepping up and, and teaching us all different ways to give and to activate. Um, and so really these, these leaders, they're helping inspire radical generosity and they're helping inspire other leaders and for people to take this and to make it their own. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, we know this from our data, our research, our stories, you know, generous people are generous and generosity can be a real driver for broader systems change. And so by tapping into these shared values, by tapping into what people believe, we're really able to activate them and to ignite a lot of good. So how to make your movement move? These strategies, they can be applied to lots of different projects um, and the work that you do. It's again, all about empowering, encouraging, sharing out, not doing all the work yourself, but helping others do it and make it their own. And to show another example of distributed leadership, um, we're actually gonna hear from JP, who uh, is the director of the Latin America and Caribbean Hub uh, for Giving Tuesday. But I first met JP because he was one of our original hand raisers who raised his hand and, and came to the team and founded Giving Tuesday in Brazil, Dia de Joar. And through that, JP has um, really supported so many different leaders at all different levels on uh, activating their ideas around generosity and, and civil society. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to JP who can explain this even more. JP? Hi there. Thank you, thank you, Kate. And, and hello again, everyone. Let me uh, share my, my screen. I'm gonna be talking about uh, uh, an experience we have been doing in Brazil on giving a uh, giving circle and that has all of these spirits the, and values and principles that Kate is bringing us. So let, let me share with you my screen. First of all, uh, I'm, 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 I'm speaking from Brazil, from Sao Paulo. I'm wearing a red shirt. I have a very big bold here and a bird and, and, and we're using glasses as well. And, and being from Brazil, I have a Portuguese and an indigenous background from, from, from my family. Well, yes, as, as Kate was mentioning, I was one of, of the first hand raisers. We learned about it, and I'm here because of Giving Tuesday. There's no uh, running away from it, and, and I love it. I mean, what we have accomplished accomplished in these last 10 years, what how Giving Tuesday has evolved and grown, and uh, pretty much in, in Brazil, all we did was replicate or, or somehow mimic what we were learning and seeing in the US from Giving Tuesday and making it happen locally and making it grow locally. And now this is the same thing that we want to do with Giving Circles in Brazil. So I'm here to bring you an example of our, uh, a volunteer works uh, uh, we have been doing with uh, promoting giving circles in Brazil in a context where, where people don't really know where it, where it is. So uh, let, let me uh, start uh, sharing my moving forward here on my screen and uh, let you uh, give you some context about, about Brazil, just in case you don't know much about it. I, I had this image 
made on uh, through in, in, uh, artificial artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm not really good on using uh, the software, so it didn't come out as I expected. But you can see here a heart in, in, inside the Brazilian map. And Brazil is a, is a huge country. I mean, we have over 220 million people. And, and by having a big country, we definitely also have a, a big nonprofit sector. We are talking about over 800,000 nonprofits in Brazil. There are plenty of, of nonprofits all, all around the country. And uh, most recent, recently, we have just published a report showing that the nonprofit sector in Brazil amounts to up for 4.27 percent of our gross domestic product. So we are quite representative in our economy. Uh, we are we are a big sector in Brazil. We, we employ over two million people in, in the nonprofits in the nonprofit sector in Brazil. However, uh, we do have a very weak philanthropic culture in the country. People don't really understand the role of the nonprofit sector, how it actually uh, works to strengthen our democracy, how it actually how it how it's strategic for us to achieve social justice, to have a more democ democratic country. And, and in light of that, people don't really have this culture of, of giving and connecting to the nonprofit sector charities, as we see in other countries. The US, for example. Uh, so we don't really understand here what a giving circle is. There are, as, long, as far as I know, there are no formal giving circles in Brazil. Don't, 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 don't mistake me, giving circles happen. They are around us because people get together in their workplaces, people get together in their schools, in their families, they put money together. In, in the end of the year, when it's Christmas, they, they give that money, they choose a cause, an organization. Well, giving circles are happening informally throughout Brazil. And I, I know, I'm sure it's, they're happening elsewhere in the world as well. But the idea of uh, uh, having a formal structuring a giving circle, as we learn a lot from, from philanthropy together, it's not well, it's not, un, not understand, understood in Brazil. People don't really know about it and people don't speak about it, they don't recognize themselves as being part of giving circles. And we want to change that. We want to start promoting the idea as many other ideas that we have been learning, growing, supporting as part of our of my work on Giving Tuesday and my volunteer work in Brazil to strength and philanthropy, for example, mutual aid. Uh, as well as something uh, that we also want to strengthen, uh, uh, community philanthropy and so on and so forth. But on giving circles, we don't really have nothing in Brazil. And I wanted to do something about it. I, I took the, the Philanthropy Together Launchpad course two years ago. I was inspired by it. I was really excited to be part of giving circles. Uh, I joined Grapevine. I, I didn't if I didn't actually join a, a giving circle there, but I'm, I have my, my profile. I'm going to do that at some point. And I wanted to do something in Brazil. So and and, and then Dia de Duar was coming, Giving Tuesday, Dia de Duar in Brazil. And Dia de Duar in Brazil has been growing year after year. It's uh, it's hosted by the Brazilian Fundraisers Association, ABCR, before joining Giving Tuesday as the hub director for Latin America and the Caribbean. I was the CEO for the Brazilian Fundraisers Association. I was one of the leaders who brought Giving Tuesday uh, uh, to, to Brazil. And I have always been very excited, inspired, inspired by the, the work that we do in Giving Tuesday. And pretty much we, we promote an idea, we promote generosity, but people on the ground, they are doing the Dia de Doar, they are making it happen. We are just uh, inspiring them as well. And it has it has been growing. And every year on Dia de Doar, on, on Giving Tuesday, I myself, I, do, I give a lot. Uh, I, I if uh, if anyone who reaches out to me on WhatsApp on, on Dia de Duar, I give. If they send me a link, I, I will make a ten dollar donation. So I spend a lot of money. Uh, I save uh, for for giving to from Dia Paradar. And every year, I sent out a message 
through WhatsApp to my list, uh, suggesting a nonprofit that they could be giving to if they already didn't have one of their own choice. And, uh, but last year, I did something different. And I, I was applying to speak here. I wanted to be part of, of the We Give Summit as well. I, I love the conference. I was uh, thinking, what, what could I suggest as a, a speaker? And I thought, why not have an experience of uh, having our own giving circle in Brazil? Why not make it happen and learn from it and use it to grow give, giving circles and grow the movement, uh, the collective giving movement in Brazil? So last year, instead of nominating a nonprofit to get a donation from my network. I actually, on Giving Tuesday, I sent out uh, uh, WhatsApp messages. I have a, around a thousand uh, contact uh, numbers in my, my WhatsApp in Brazil. WhatsApp is big in Brazil. I sent out a message last year uh, inviting my, my network to join me in, ex in experience of uh, leading, creating, making real our, our first formal giving circle in Brazil. So that's what I did last year on give, during Giving Tuesday, September, November 29th. And this is what has been happening since then. How has it been developing uh, since uh, November, the Apadar Giving Tuesday 2022. So I had 50 hand, raise, hand raisers. Out of almost a thousand people, 50 of them answered me. And I, I, I'm a little bit organized. So instead of only asking them to reply to my message, I actually shared a form, a link, a Google Forms with them. And I said, if you want to be with me in this project, if you want to build a giving circle and learn with me and, and make it together, fill this form. So I had 50 answers in one week. I was expecting 20. I got 50, I was surprised, I was in shock actually, because there's too many people. I, I, I couldn't do, I thought I couldn't do that many uh, people. Uh, it's 5%, I mean, it's, it's uh, more than I would expect if I would be launching a campaign. And, and it was, I was, I was, well, inspired by then, I was happy and uh, we had to make it work. So uh, the first phase in the next three months, January, February and March of this year, I led monthly meetings where we talked about our giving circle. In the first monthly meeting, January, I pretty much, pretty much shared the content I had from the, the Launchpad course. I, I translated and I talked to, to the participants what was a giving circle, how it was going to be, what we would have to decide. Uh, and, and that everything would be collective and, and we'd be coming together to make the, the most strategic decisions together, not me, JP, saying what they would be doing, how much they would be giving, but all of us deciding and, and making it happen, uh, finding consensus. And I actually had one dropout. One, one, some, one, one friend came, came to me later and said, well, I think it's a lot of effort to put into the giving circle. I don't have that time now, but all of the other 49 remains. We, we had a survey. We surveyed our members uh, to, to learn from them which causes are most relevant to them, to learn from them how much they think they, we should be giving to the giving circle, uh, if, uh, how, how did they think the governance should be, if we should take decisions unanimously or if we should take it by vote. I mean, we have to think of everything when doing our, our giving circle. We, we have been thinking about everything. This first three months uh, went to, to, to structure it. And we eventually we decided that we would be having a finance committee. And then two out of the 50 hand, uh, uh, raised their hand and, and they are working with me. In the, in the finance committee, we decided we were going to have a communication committee because people don't know each other. They know me. I was the point of contact to all of the 50, but many of, most of them, they don't know each other. So we are going to share about our members within the giving circle as well. And since last week, 
we started collecting the donations. So now, we, and we opened a bank account, we were deciding, we don't have Grapevine in Brazil, we don't have anything such as Grapevine. Uh, so we decided if we were going to have the money on, a, on an individual bank account, a, a host it on, on no profit, it's, it, I have an account. I, we, I opened up a specific account for it and we started collecting donations last week and we have raised $600 so far. Uh, our goal is to get to up a thousand dollars and out of the 50, we don't have the final numbers yet, but probably 25 to 30 will be giving yeah. to the giving circle, will be donating. That's my expectations now that things are happening. And uh, by September, after this uh, second phase, by September, we will be coming together again with the money in hand to decide which is which, which is the cause, the cause that moves us. Where do we want to give the money to? Because uh, usually the giving circle, they, people come together because they already have the cause. We, it was not our case in Brazil. We came together because we wanted to learn more about giving circles, make be part of one and grow it afterwards. So the, the, all of us, each one of us has a cause in mind. It's a specific cause that we give to tragedies, uh, emergencies, appeals have been happening a lot in Brazil. So we will be coming together later this year to decide where the money is going to go to. And finally, we will have to decide if we want to keep the giving circle open or not active probably it's gonna it's gonna be like this I and mean, probably we will we want to keep uh, the giving circle active and we want to keep on donating and coming together every six months or once a year to uh, decide where the money is going to uh, but I, I after at least after this five this first moment I want to write about it I want to uh, study more giving circles and promote more use this experience to promote more giving circles uh, uh, in Brazil, but I didn't want to share about our experience alone by myself. So I invited one of the 50 hand raisers to be here with us and share with you why she decided to answer my call, why she decided to be part of our giving circle experience in Brazil and how has it been to her? How is her uh, uh, feeling, her sentiment from, from the Giving Tuesday, the Giving Circle experience in Brazil? So, I want to uh, share the floor now, pass up the floor now to Natalia Gonçalves, a good friend of mine for many years from the nonprofit sector in Brazil. She's been doing amazing work, uh, helping, supporting the nonprofit sector in Brazil. We've been speaking together so many times as well. We have, we have, I have had the pleasure of having her by my side, in my side, and I invited her, and she once again raised her hand to come and in a, in a few minutes in, in, in share with you uh, her experience. So I'm going to actually stop my screen so that we can see Natalia. Uh, uh, fully and hear from her and her experience. And Natalia, thank you for having say, said yes to my call and being part of this giving circle in Brazil. Thank you, JP. Thank you very much. I am very happy to be here with you. Uh, here in the Give Summit is a wonderful event. We full of uh, great panelists and people. So I'm very, very happy. Well, my name is Natalia. I'm wearing a striped blouse. I have a brown hair. I am Latin American. I wear glasses. I am in a room uh, with some pictures on a white wall. And I am have been working in the third sector for over 10 years and now, I know today uh, that I am a, a hand hazer <laughs> and I am very happy to, to share my experience uh, today. Well, I have known João Paulo or JP <laughs> uh, for many years since I started my career as a fundraiser. So when he invited us to be part of his giving circle, I accepted because I knew the, the work, the good work that JP has done for many years at Brazilian uh, Fundraisers Association and because he is a great enthusiast 
of philanthropy and give, giving culture here in Brazil. And it's true, he, he gives uh, for everybody who asks for him. Uh, he's a very uh, generous uh, guy and professional. And I have been given for many years by myself and I thought it would be a very enriching experience to be part of a giving circle, a concept that's not so well known here. And I don't know other giving uh, circles in Brazil. And I find the proposal of giving and make decisions collectively very interesting because it's a, it's a way to maximize uh, financial resources and learn about new causes, new, new organizations and different uh, points of view. And I think it's challenging to make decisions collectively, but I believe it is the, the core of this practice of the, the giving circle. And nowadays, uh, I think uh, nowadays more than ever, we need to promote it, dialogues and find out what is important to us as a community. Uh, because in the last few years, uh, as you know, Brazil has suffered a lot from polarization and divisions. And I think we need to create it and promote it and participate in spaces to be together and discuss with people who have different ideas and, and perspectives, but who have uh, the same proposal, which is to enable uh, and promote social, social justice. So I'm still given to, to the organizations that I previously supported, uh, but I uh, now I'm also part of the Giving Circle created by EJP. And I am very excited about the upcoming meetings that we will have in the circle because we will discuss the calls, the organization we will be supporting this year. And I think it's a, a, a great exercise to, to, to promote um, uh, I space uh, to be together with other people. And, uh, and, and promote a, a, a generous um, space a, a compassionate space to, to discuss and, and be in, in re reunion with people. So, so thank you. I am very, very happy and excited to, to give it uh, with, within a group. It's a, a different experience for me. Thank you, perfect. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you for sharing, for being here. Natalia, as, as me, I think you're also in Sao Paulo right now as well, Natalia, or in the countryside in Sao Paulo right now? So I am the countryside in Sao Paulo. In the countryside of the state of Sao Paulo, so we're both from, from the Global South. And I'm, I'm passing the, the floor back to Kate. I think we have a question here in 10 more minutes, right, Kate? So we are, we are on time and we, we can now take a few questions from you, from the audience as well. Exactly. So please, you can use the questions uh, feature, just put in the chat. We'd, we'd love to hear your questions. There is one in here and um, someone is asking about how does Giving Tuesday stay informed on the changes in the social sector movements and how does it ensure it is not participating in building its brand using those proximate leaders? Um, just reading it over. So I think I think the question's getting at how how have, how has the brand and movement grown, even though it's it's really co-owned by everyone who's creating it, um, which, which is a big question. And, and the heart logo, all the different hearts around the world, um, is. Uh, is something that it grew very organically um, that leaders and hand raisers and people like JP came up with designs that represented their country colors and, and their flags. So that all just came from the community. Um, I think having it be different, but still on the same course has just always worked. And, and at least in my experience, it's because of the, the people, the leaders who 
are believing it and who are using the tools and the um, opportunities, everything that's created and shared to do good. So for the right means and in the spirit and values of the movement. Um, it has kind of grown almost like a snowball in a way where it has caught on and now there's enough energy that that's that's what people do with Giving Tuesday. And so we're we're constantly learning about new ideas though and new applications for it. So we we don't know everything that happens. Um, and there's activities in every country and territory on earth on the day. So even outside of the 90 official movements that we have. So it's um it's very widespread, but that's kind of the beauty of it. That's how it works, is that people are able to apply and use different tools to make it their own. And we trust that they're doing it in the spirit of the movement. Um, I hope that's answering those questions. Um, I don't know, JP, if you want to add anything on to that, just with your experience in, in leading at a country level. Sure. I was just uh, on that, and then I will follow up with uh, Tisha's uh, question here o on it, uh, the sector itself, I mean, by, by being open and being created together with people from all around the world, over 90 countries with national movements and many more countries with activations. I mean, we, even the starting fellowship we have, uh, have fellows from countries where we don't have a national giving Tuesday movement. It's a way that uh, the movement itself has been able to include more people and be my, more diverse on how it functions uh, around the world. So in, in Africa, it's one of our biggest regions in the world. With more, more local movement, more people coming together in, in, in a continent where already there is a strong generosity culture and tradition throughout the, uh, the regions and, and, and throughout the people. And that's the same in Latin America and Giving Tuesday has been helping us in Latin America to identify what has uh, what already happens in the ground, but we don't know because we are not looking to indigenous people, to uh, people who live uh, on the rivers. In Portuguese, it's called Ribeirinhos, people who live by the rivers, but have been, have been there by, by years. The Quilombolas, who are the descendants from the slaves in Brazil and other countries in the region, in Haiti, and so on and so forth. So Giving Tuesday as a movement already brings it as a part of its principles and values. And on uh, Tisha's question about how, how can uh, people in, in the US better support us, uh, uh, in the growth of the Giving Circle movement in Brazil. Well, first of all, of course, keep doing what you have been doing with the uh, philanthropy together because it's it's an inspiration and we look up to see what's happening and to see what we can bring down and, and, and adapt and adjust and learn. But of course, in the future, uh, one, one specific uh, struggle that we have in Brazil and as we will be having in other places in the world is language. Language will always be a barrier. So eventually in the future, if we are able to uh, have content in Portuguese or in Spanish for other countries in, in, in Latin America and uh, even, uh, even other countries speak even more languages in the region. Uh, but if, uh, if we are able, if you can support people in Brazil, we can even try to find partners uh, to uh, organize a local version of the launch pad uh, to Brazilians, for example. That would be amazing for us to, to uh, have more people engaged because again people are generous and even though we don't i say that we have a weak philanthropic culture it doesn't mean that people are not giving on the ground they are giving to the churches they are giving to the communities they are giving to people who are who is asking on the streets and uh but we we don't we don't understand we don't study that and we don't frame it as giving circles and by promoting the idea of giving circles, we will be able to leverage it, leverage it even more, at least in the way I, I see it. So uh, there's so many ways that you can help us uh, grow the giving circles movement in Brazil. I stop for, from there because we have five minutes and two more questions here. I, I actually think what you just said helps to respond to another question that came through about tech tools to mobilize leaders in the public. Um, how JP just explained, like people are giving in lots of different ways. We all have different communities and networks that we're a part of. There are great tools and platforms and resources available. 
Um, there's communication channels like, you know, social media and, 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 you know, what we tend to use on a daily basis to communicate and promote campaigns. Um, but what we're learning more and more about, especially through our data work, is there's just so much generosity happening, even at a very local level and offline and through mutual aid and different community networks, um, especially in areas of, of lots of need or that might not have the accessibility um, that a lot of us do, where we can just go immediately online through our phones and be connected. And so um, I think the, the question almost is, you know, who are you trying to reach and activate? Because people will have different ways to get there and there's different ways to frame it, just as JP explained. Um, and so there's, uh, that's kind of a non-answer to the question, um, but I do think that there isn't really a one size fits all communication solution for this. It's really about thinking about how people activate and again, giving them the tools and opportunity to translate that through the channels they use in their communities because they'll help deliver your message for you. Um, I, I can see yeah. Melissa's question here about the, a piece of advice uh, where uh, how people can start a giving circle where, where they, are, they aren't well known. I would, I would pretty much say that the, the idea of giving circles are not is not well known pretty much outside of the US, maybe Canada, uh, uh, at least from what I know and what I follow in the philanthropic sector of the world. So uh, well, you, you you have to, the best way to make it happen to is, is start by example. Right? If, you, if you find someone there, if you are the, the, the person who can actually lead experience of having a giving circle in your country, getting your closer friends to be part of it, to learn from it and share your learnings, that will, will definitely have a great impact uh, uh, in spreading the world on giving circles in your region, in your country, finding hand raisers, finding people who would love uh, to be part of the movement and to learn by doing, learn by experience. And actually, I had one, one more thing to say about just one moment on how can it help. Uh, uh, help us in Brazil and other people. If, if you eventually have the opportunity to come to visit the country and speak here, speak to our philanthropists, speak to our nonprofits, speak to our communities about giving circles. That's always very well appreciated. Sometimes we don't have the budget to bring people to Brazil and other countries in the global south, but this is something that might happen. I, I can't, I'll never forget when you had Henry, Asha, Kate here in Brazil is speaking about giving to the impact it has in our people because sometimes uh, having someone from outside speaking gives even more credibility to what you want to share and, and, and uh, have people engaged. And finally, Tisha is also saying here uh, that they have people in Launchpad for you, for Launchpad for you want to start uh, a giving circle in the US to grant to organizations in Brazil and Mexico. What resources do I think that would be most have, helpful to consider or support on, well, uh, I, I will speak from, from heart. Of course, I, I'm always a volunteer to uh, non suggest nonprofits in Brazil or to share friends we have in Mexico, like Anita, so that she can help uh, on a volunteer basis to suggest nonprofits in Mexico. But if you are talking to someone who is not willing to and don't have the time to, to talk to us, look for organizations in the US who are grant makers of uh, nonprofits in Brazil or that usually uh, are partners of organizations in Brazil and Mexico, like, like uh, uh, Global Giving. Global Giving has over 700 nonprofits, part of Global Giving in, in Latin America and the Caribbean as well, or the Brazil Foundation or CAF America and others like those organizations who already are partners, support organizations in, in Latin America or in Africa or in Asia, if, if that's the case. I think we are out of time, right? We are at time, but I hope this is just the start of conversations and feel free to reach out to us for ideas. Um, I can put my email in the chat, but connect us to on the platform and we're constantly learning and listening and, and shaping this with, with the community. So we definitely would love to speak with you and hear more about all that you're doing. That's it. Uh, I'm also sharing here my, my mail, my social, uh, uh, my social network to, to everybody. Natalia, thank you again for, for accepting one, sec one, one more invitation from, from me. I hope, uh, hope uh, we can meet in person soon in our conference and also as well as Kate. 
uh, and all the giving circle, giving Tuesday, and uh, my friends from around the world. So bye bye everybody. Thank you. Well. Here Great, thank you to our wonderful me. speakers again, Kay, Natalia, JP. Please do follow their work. Um, they're such incredible partners and also great collaborators. So we appreciate all the value ins valuable insights you provided here in the session. But I know there's many, many more hours that you can provide. So please get in touch with them. And then for everyone, if you want to re-watch this recording or for those that are, have to join and watch later, um, this session will be available in your agenda in the next few days. So please watch then. Uh, before we wrap up, I do want to announce the raffle winner um, for the session, Jay Frost, if you're still here. Um, amazing. You will be receiving that book of your choice from one of the authors, so we'll get in touch with you over email uh, to get those details from you. Um, but thank you all again for joining us, and we look forward to all of you joining um, and seeing you more at sessions of the We Give Summit. The next one is at the top of an hour uh, called Unlocking the Power of Finance, and also don't forget to uh, I think the poll just launched the two question poll for feedback on this particular session, but um, we just have a quick video for one of our sponsors, the King uh, Baldwin Foundation um, US, and we look forward to continue engaging online. Thank you all. I'm Kari Stella, Senior Advisor at the King Baldwin Foundation in the United States. We give to Asia, our partner in the Mirrored Alliance for Borderless Giving, we are proud to sponsor the third annual We Give Summit. We believe in the power of collective giving. So it is a privilege to be part of this community of giving circle leaders, philanthropy experts, and visionaries who are changing communities around the world. With a global perspective and deep regional expertise, we can help you support your favorite causes around the globe. Whether it's a university in South Africa, a cancer research center in France, Organizations that are working to preserve forests in Brazil or providing disaster relief aid in Ukraine, Turkey, Malawi, or India. We look forward to connecting and thank you for this opportunity.